Hi everyone, welcome to Art and Talk. Art and Talk is an online interviewing platform for artists to share their art, their creativity, and their passion. We embrace all the arts, the traditional arts and the spiritual arts to bring you diverse and quality interviews to watch and to be inspired by. Thank you so much for being with us today. You can stay connected with Art and Talk on our YouTube channel, on Facebook, and on Twitter. Please subscribe, like, and share. We appreciate your support. I'm Leslie Sue, the host for Art and Talk. And today we have a guest author, and she's also a spiritual teacher, and she channels the Ascended Master, Sarah, who is the daughter of the Magdalene. And in our guest's new book, we'll be exploring it. It's called Sarah's Little Book of Healing. So we'll be finding out all about uh, this new book. Thank you again for being with us. And I'd like to welcome our guest for today, Rachel Goodwin. Rachel, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. It's, it's lovely to be here. Oh, well, we're excited that you're here and excited to find out about this new book and all about Ascended Master Sarah and uh, about you and, and, and your gifts of the spirit. So where would you like to start, Rachel? Well, I'll just I'll just um, mention about the book is is actually I did write it some years ago, but it went through a major rebirth last year. Um, it had been a Kindle book and it had been very small. And then people asked me for more channeling. So I went through it and I, I added ever such a lot more material. And I also went through the process of getting it like turned into a print book because I realized that was also important. So it's a it's a it's a second edition, really, this one, but it definitely went through a rebirth. Mm -hmm. So through this rebirth, um, th did the focus on healing change or was it the same? And, and can you kind of elaborate, Rachel, on, on the healing that, that's contained in the book and, and how it's uh, applied? Yeah, well, when I when I wrote this book, I've been working with Sarah for about nine years, I think. But she was very, um, I mean, and she still is relatively unknown, but she was really, really unknown when I first brought this book out. And it was only really people on my newsletter list that were buying it. But now it's because the Magdalene, working with the Magdalene, Mary Magdalene, has become such a huge thing now. I don't know if everybody realises this, but... There are so many teachers and so many people offering amazing courses, working with the Magdalene to access the divine feminine energy that now people have started looking for stuff on Sarah. And I'm still really the only person who people can find stuff on Sarah. Um, so, you know, people are buying, people are buying this book and going, oh, you were the only person that said something about her. So it's kind of gone from being a book that was really born into obscurity to something that is now this resource for people because they're feeling connected to her, but, the, but they can't find, they can't find stuff on her. I don't think it will stay this way for long. I think sooner or later, someone else is going to start writing and, and, and making it their main thing. It won't just be me. So Rachel, you've really been a pioneer in bringing out the teachings of Sarah. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, I've very much brought it out from kind of my, you know, where I'm coming from, of course. And, you know, my background is as a psychiatric nurse. I'm a trained psychiatric nurse in the UK. I live in Denmark now. Um, and we specialize in the UK. So I'm not trained to kind of like look after people who have got um, like physical illnesses. I'm only trained to work in mental health. So I did a lot of studying in counseling. Um, I also did like foundational courses in group um, psychoanalytical psychotherapy. And so, you know, I'm very much like someone who is interested in the psychological and the emotional. And actually, Sarah is fantastic. So at the bottom of it, because, you know, it's been so many years that I'm working with Sarah that now things are getting more and more meta metaphysical and kind of esoteric. But the basic foundation of me and of my work with her 
has been about healing, has been about energy healing, and a lot to do with emotional healing as well. Okay. And so the emotional healing connected into the divine feminine, the whole like uh, emotional state, emotional body. Yeah, exactly. Because, I mean, this is it. So if we're looking at Sarah as sort of a, a paradigm, she's standing on the shoulders of Yeshua and Mary Magdalene. And I, can, I tend to call him Yeshua because it just delineates that this is not coming from a Christian background because, you know, she's a little bit of a contentious figure. Sarah, some people get very upset at the thought that she, you know, suggestion that she even exists. Um, but, you know, where I'm coming from as an energy healer is, well, look, we've got this divine feminine, we've got this divine masculine, you bring them together and it's unity, it's unity consciousness. And this is Sarah's energy. This is like, you know, to me, like the history and the story is one of the least important things the fact is that if you call on her and you bring her presence in things start to unify within you so that is why she is such a valuable resource and she, she's such a valuable resource for healers and therapists particularly mm -hmm. yes um tell us um before we get into your book rachel how did you even um come in contact with ascended master sarah can you touch upon like maybe your first encounters how did all this develop yeah, well, I'll just go back a little bit more and just give you a little brief sort of overlook of like my life. And, you know, I grew up, I was baptised into the Church of England, which is a Protestant church. And it's it's almost not a religion. I know a lot of Protestant Church of England people are going, no, that's not true. But so that's how it was to me, like being brought up. It was kind of there in the background, but it was not a very strong influence, shall we say, on my life. And my father was an atheist. My mother was a lapsed Catholic because her first husband died. And then she just like said, OK, I've had it with God. So I was really brought up in this atheist kind of home. And I was very cynical and not open to anything spiritual. I thought people who did all that was like crazy. And then I trained, you know, as a psychiatric nurse, and that is what I was doing. And while that happened, my mum got really, really sick with cancer. And she went through like a long journey of trying to, you know, have treatments and things, but they didn't work. And she passed just before I went to get my like diploma, my nursing diploma. So it was a really, really difficult time for me. And when that happened, it kind of like it kind of like people who are like sensitive to energy might have some idea of what I mean when I say it kind of blew my aura, basically. And I was really able to feel that my mum was around. I was sensitive to spirit and I always had been sensitive to spirit, but I hadn't want to know about it. I was not interested. I was like, that was all for crazy people. <laughs> so <laughs> interesting. And I was working as a psychiatric nurse, but that's it. You know, there's been a lot of past life stuff for me to work through with all of this. So that led me from one thing to another. And, you know, in the end, I sort of acknowledge, yes, I am a spiritual person. Yes, I do have spiritual gifts. And I had to sort of like work through the whole thing. It just like my life sort of went from me being one sort of person to being quite a changed person. You know, people didn't sort of recognize me from one incarnation to the next. And then as my abilities grew and my sensitivities grew, um, I got a push to learn channeling. And I'd seen other people channel and I thought, oh, I, I really loved it. I could feel all the energies coming in. I could feel it really affected my third eye. You know, I was getting it all. But I didn't see why spirit wanted me to learn how to channel because I was like, I can't do that. You know, I'm just a, I'm just a person, you know, it's not for me, but it, it wouldn't go away. And most of the things I've done spiritual, I've kind of been nagged into it. It's like, if you have a voice like going in your ear, like I think it went on for about two years, like every day, learn to channel, learn to channel. And in the, in the end, I did. And I was very much kind of in the divine feminine energy. I trained as a priestess, as a goddess. I just, I just, that energy, I just loved it. I just sort of like, oh, where have you been? 
all my life you know I just kind of like soaked it up like a sponge um and then one thing led to another I went to Hawaii on on a beautiful um trip I went on a retreat a woman's trip, retreat a sort of a treat after me after I had my first son and um when I came back I worked a lot with Pele and I went and taught this workshop I was so like really wanted to share all this stuff that I found in Hawaii all these amazing earth energies and then Sarah came through Sarah came through I opened up the channel and Sarah came through and I was really sort of a bit like I don't know what's going on here because I didn't really know who she was she wasn't even someone that I really believed in or anything <laughs> so but it's like you know when you're channeling if you don't kind of speak the words that come through you don't really get anything else it's not like they go oh, all right you didn't like that sentence we'll, we'll say something else to you. you just have to you just have to trust it and and go with it so I gave this channeling from Sarah and I mean everybody loved it and but also I recognized the energy from her I recognised the energy of Yeshua and Mary Magdalene because I had worked with both of them. Um, so, yeah, so, <laughs> so it turned into quite a long story there. But, yeah, that was that's how she turned up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, I appreciate you sharing that. We get a, a good kind of feel for your background and then how she just kind of like kind of came into your awareness and into your channel work. Yeah. So it's correct, Rachel, that um, so she represents the divine feminine and, and through her healing, um, as we said, you know, we're focusing on the emotional state and emotional balance, but you were also saying she brings in the uh, mental body as well for healing. So she does combine both the mental and emotional for, for balance and healing. Yeah, but well, she actually represents the divine masculine and the divine feminine held in oneness. And my way through to that has been my love of the divine feminine and the fact that, you know, she came to me as Mary Magdalene's daughter because I love Mary Magdalene's energy. And then it's only been in the last, I think, year, really, that I've truly started to work with the divine masculine energy because I've had huge, huge blocks to that. And, and I think this is what makes Sarah so interesting and so kind of important at this point in our journey because this is where we all need to go we all need to get this balance of feminine and masculine in us and it's quite a big job I'll be honest <laughs> it's not it's not it's not a small thing to do this but I mean you know like you can see in our society how split we are between sort of the masculine and the feminine there's so much kind of forgiveness work that needs to be done there and so much healing and but Sarah like for us kind of spiritual folk she holds an energy that is just so helpful in in starting on this path it's, it's really an evolutionary path mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so it's a return to wholeness that the masculine and the feminine as one and Sarah representing that and, and bringing that to us through uh through you and through her teachings yeah Absolutely. You've just said it. Oh, perfect. So Rachel, if we were to just kind of break down Sarah's message into um, a couple sentences or a couple adjectives, um, by and large, um, what would you say her, her overall message is? I always dread when people ask me that because I've been working with her for 15 years now and I'm actually writing my second book on her about the strands of Sarah you know like weaving them all together because there are so many different aspects to her energy and I realized that yesterday because I've brought all the channelings together now and I, so I already have a huge amount of material and then yesterday I started actually writing like my narrative for this second book and I looked up to see how long I've been working with her because I forget and I looked at that first channeling that I was just telling you about, like when I was working on these Hawaiian energies, and it was actually yesterday. It was it was 15 years ago to yesterday when I started writing the, the narrative on this um, second book. But because I've worked with her so, and I've worked with her a lot, so it is really hard for me to kind of condense her down. But if I 
if I can, as much as I, you know, if I can condense her as much as I possibly can, it would be to say she's here to support us in our evolutionary journey into the new age. She also has a huge role in working with sacred earth energies and creating power places. So kind of like she's creating like the new age, like within our energy body and also with the earth's energy body so she's kind of a bit of an earth engineer as well mm -hmm. okay yeah that, that gives us kind of like a, a, a good feel for that all right so she's really involved with the earth energies and as you said that this the sacred earth um kind of establishing that as well can you describe since you have a lot of um channeling experience um what does your energy feel like so we can kind of step into your shoes what would like when Sarah comes in you what does that feel like to you? Well, I mean, it tends to feel different to different people and people also get a bit of what they need at the time. Like, so a lot of people say to me, oh, her energy is so light and gentle. And I have to say, I don't experience her <laughs> like that. She, she, when she comes into me, um, I mean, it can, sometimes it's very empowering. Sometimes it's very energizing. Other times, so you know, if I'm in a if I'm in a state of dissociation, if I've become split away, shall we say, from my feelings because I've been going through some difficult stuff, she comes in and I'm just suddenly kind of attached to all of myself. Suddenly, it's like I'm suddenly all woven together, so I can feel all of that stuff that I was trying to like flick away over there and maybe deal with in 10 years or something so divine fullness is definitely something that is a term that that comes to mind but I mean this is one of the reasons why I channel her and I do it you know I, I just kind of do it on Facebook lives or on my workshops or because it's like it's like trying to describe healing it's like you have to really experience it it's really hard it's really hard to put words on it Right, right, yeah. Let's take a look at the book cover. Um, if you give me just a moment, I'll pull that up. Okay. So here we have Sarah's Little Book of Healing by you, Rachel. Yeah. I, I actually designed that book cover myself. I was... <laughs> Someone told me really, really recently they thought it was like a professionally published book. I said, no, I did it all. I did it all myself on, on Amazon. I think, I think next time I, this, for this book, I'm going to get a bit of help because it did take quite a long time doing it all. Right, right. Yeah, well, it came out well. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so it's the channeled. Um, now you have the word techniques. So there's some techniques in the book in relationship to healing. Could you share a little bit about that? Yeah, so there's a there's a there's a there's quite a simple process laid out in the book of like, you know, an A, B, and C kind of thing. And uh, so you start with, you know, getting ready for healing. Um, and there's different processes that you work through at each stage, creating the healing space. So, for example, Sarah has her own vibration of the violet flame and the violet flame is an energy that's used to clear and cleanse and transmute stuff. So it's the example she, she's sort of given in the book is like, you know, when you want to plant your garden, you don't start by, you know, planting into the middle of a load of weeds or, you know, stuff that's been left. You have to clear it all up. You have to pull all the weeds out. You have to take away the bits of broken glass or whatever and give it a good tidy first and it's the same with us we energetically sort of have to clear the space um before we before we start going in and i have to say all of sarah's techniques are pretty simple which is great um but that doesn't mean they're not powerful they are really powerful and then she gives two main ways of working with healing and one is to travel into kind of the center of yourself where you make contact with the essence of your soul and Sarah's energy is really catalytic for this process she she enables all sorts of things to happen that if you don't invite her in they wouldn't otherwise happen and then the other process is um sort of 
reaching up into the high dimensions and and bringing it in but you know there's quite a lot in there saying about how they're actually the same thing <laughs> going up to the higher and going within or actually you know you are contacting the same energy it just it feels different because of the way you're doing it mm-hmm. yeah and then there's a there's a number of like you know three week things you can do and and so on and so forth in the back and then so what I really added was quite a few channelings. I added quite a few channelings, and it's because people can contact Sarah's energy through reading the channelings. You don't just get the words; you also get her presence when 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 you read them. And um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting. So that kind of brings in the the mental, or I don't know if you want to say like left brain, uh, kind of like procedural way. Of, of approaching healing, as you just mentioned, with the three steps, um, mm-hmm. and um, then also bringing in the her presence through um, the the channelings through the book. Uh, let's go ahead and hear um, from you, Rachel, a selection of the book that you'd like to read, so we can get kind of like a taste for it. Yeah, well, I thought I'd I thought I'd start off and just read like the introduction. Okay. because it sort of gives a bit of an overview of the, of the book so it's it starts off saying healing is a process that we're constantly going through our bodies know how to heal themselves when you cut your finger you don't need to do anything or tell your skin how to heal that wound we are taught to optimize this healing process by staying in the best condition that we can by looking after ourselves physically mentally emotionally and spiritually In the same way, our souls know how to heal ourselves spiritually. And by giving ourselves the right conditions and environment, our souls can achieve great feats of healing, whether it's in our relationships, jobs, finances, our well-being, our health, and so on. Sarah is a powerful ally to assist us in our healing process as we walk our path into the new age of Aquarius. Her energy as an ascended master acts as a catalyst for evolutionary change, helping us move ourselves and our lives into the energy of the new age of Aquarius. This is a great work for each of us. We are clearing many things, our past lives, and perhaps an even greater work of clearing is that of our ancestral lines. The divine feminine energy is being resurrected in Western culture and is restoring us to our healing and intuitive abilities. Many are learning to develop their natural psychic and spiritual gifts that are an integral part of humanity. We're moving into the new age, a time of balance and harmony. And Sarah comes in female form to show us that equally as the son of God came to save us. Now the daughter comes to teach us how we can heal ourselves and create from a place of wholeness. In the archetype of the Christ Sarah, the female form is honoured as sacred, something which we have been lacking in Western culture born again in a new story of the Holy Family. So in this story of Jesus and Mary Magdalene, we can find equality, honour and dignity for women as well as for men. And the blueprints of the profound metaphysical significance contained within the sacred marriage. Mm. Mm. That was beautiful. So we get a good feel uh, through this introduction, Rachel, um, that Sarah is really presenting that, you know, we we have the ability to heal within ourselves and um, through you and um, Sarah coming through, we're able to tap into that that place of um, healing so that we're healing all those areas that you mentioned. Yes, absolutely. And and. You know, that's something that Sarah very much teaches, and that is kind of daily life as therapy. She says, you don't really need to go anywhere to find out what you need to heal. You just need to like open your eyes and your ears and your senses to look at 
what is happening around you and become interested in it and then curious about it. And when you do that, you start to get presented with all the things that perhaps your unconscious or so, you know, is, is like repressed into your subconscious and go, ah, you know, things are always giving you, always giving you clues. So I think people who like to work with Sarah um, probably are up for quite an active life. <laughs> it really keeps you busy. Yeah, so that, that's really beautiful. It's basically the whole premise is, um, as you were saying, Rachel, so just keeping your, your eyes open, your ears open, that the answers are in a sense all around you. And if you start to pay attention to your environment, what you're hearing, what you're seeing, um, you know, what's around you, that that's going to clue you into what's going on in your subconscious and then also help, help to heal you. So these answers are literally all around us and within us. It's just a matter of, of being aware. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, what, and what she has kind of taught us it, through the channelings is that when we invite her presence in, she magnetizes things. So split off parts of ourselves. So soul parts, things, traumas from past lives, even like soulmates, all the things in the shadow. We start to, because we, we call her presence in, we start to also resonate, resonate with that oneness because actually it is already within us. We have the seed inside us already. It's almost like she's watering it and waking it up. So her presence there, it starts to like, almost like start this vibration of like, and things start coming towards us. So I always say to people, especially when they first start working with Sarah, don't overdo it. <laughs> because you have to give yourself time to go through the processes. You don't, you don't want to like have to deal with too much processing at once. You've got to have breaks where you have rest and restoration going on. Mm -hmm. Right, because you said that, you know, it can be overwhelming as, as you yeah. mentioned earlier, because there's ancestral trauma, there's trauma from this lifetime, from other lifetimes, um, you know, just societal conditioning. So there's a, a lot to break down and, and a lot to heal and clear so you you kind of have to do it in a procedural way as you're saying yeah and 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 definitely take breaks and also because so her energy she is a representation of like an archetypal type of energy which is you know a face of the divine and she is being a face for it for whoever is drawn towards her to work through but what she's told me is that it's never been this kind of oneness energy. It's never been in this level of density before. So the Lemurians had it. If we sort of go back to like early, very early on um, in Earth's history, the Lemurians had it, but they were like very, very finely sort of put together in their particles. We're at a much heavier, denser level. So it's never been here, this oneness energy, and we are starting to bring it into us now. So we, the people who are working with it are really, really, really totally pioneers with this, which also means like, take it slow. You don't have to do it all in one generation. We're the beginning of the beginning. We don't need to be the beginning, middle and the end. You know, there's hundreds of years for this to kind of keep going on. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay, so that, that whole trajectory is kind of like, um, is not just in, in this generation, it's going to, it's just a whole process of this whole undoing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And then, you know, creating this kind of beautiful energy of the new age or the golden age or, you know, whatever you want to call it, that we can all feel this it we are going to so substantially change like within our dna and our light body and you know and this is the beginning of the beginning of that process mm -hmm. i have a question for you if, if um what rachel i'm sorry what uh, sarah would would recommend um so those of us who have been kind of immersed in the the healing and awakening uh process for a while maybe those that are just starting um when you start to um, you know, really dive into it and you experiencing a lot of things, uh, um, you know, that can feel very heavy, you know, very dense and, and whatnot. And then as you were saying, Rachel, that, you know, Sarah was saying, you know, you, you have to break it up. You know, it's just not, it's, it's continual, but within the, 
the, the, the process, you have to have moments of just, you know, like putting it aside and then you're going to come back to it. So during those moments of sort of, I guess, integration or just kind of pulling away from it because there's, you know, a lot that you've been healing and clearing and you just kind of need that space to regroup. Is there anything that Rachel has, I'm sorry, that Sarah, the two of you are becoming one, uh, <laughs> interchangeable, Rachel, Sarah, Sarah, Rachel. Um, so is there anything that um, Sarah recommends during that time of sort of, um, you know, more regrouping, um, you know, on a practical level that, that we could find out about? All right. So I'll just, I'll just take a moment to ask her and see, and see what she says. <sighs> So, so, you know, I, I created a quiet space inside myself then, just sort of sank down a little bit into my body. So, because there's two ways that I communicate. Well, it's probably more than two ways that I communicate with Sarah, but there's two main ones. And one is the channeling. And the channeling is just like, I open up from above, you know, sort of you imagine like my energy body is like, going, ooh, like that. And she comes in and she like comes over me. And then it's like, she's speaking through me. And then there's what I just did then. I, I created a quiet space inside myself and she sort of comes in here and, you know, I, I wait, you know, I ask her something and then I just wait to see kind of what comes up. And, you know, that's, and that's what she said. It's like, that's, that's the thing to learn is to learn how to be quiet in yourself and just kind of sink down into your own body and just, feel what you need and I, I know for some people that's really challenging because it's a really divine feminine gift and talent and ability but you know it's another it's another practice because there is so many answers to that question because each person will need something different because like my 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 happy day is somebody else's idea of torture you know <laughs> it's like you know so you have to find out like what do I need what do I need right now do I need rest or perhaps do I need to go and do a marathon you know because we've all got such different needs so 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 that was it you know very simple it's like it's to create that quiet space inside yourself or to practice creating that quiet space because you know Sarah teaches a lot of practices <laughs> and the idea is like you, you 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 may never get brilliant at them that is not the point the point is that every time you try and practice something good will come out of it something will happen something will you know come out of you as a as a result mm -hmm. yeah um Rachel I'm I'm wondering um looking at the uh, broader um, definition of Christ, um, uh, going a little bit beyond the conventional and the, the traditional, uh, and I, I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. So um, Sarah is representing the Christ as feminine, and so it's really kind of uh, transforming that word, how it's been conventionally looked at, in that the, the Christ as, as being um, not just represented in, in, a fe in, in a masculine way, but, but also feminine and, and perhaps even you know, transcending that whole uh, gender issue and um, also being um, a part of us. So are, are, you, are you in agreement with that in, in terms of the, you know, actually defining uh, the word Christ? Well, I have to say I kind of struggle with the word Christ because to me it kind of fits within a, a, a Christian ideology and so I, I don't do I don't do too well like personally the chick see the channelings are different the channelings it's like me you know sort of say my brain interpreting what Sarah is is given to me so I quite often use terms and things in the channelings that I don't actually like personally use necessarily um 
but but I mean that that thing about you know it, it feels like she's bringing this balance because because like it's been so male dominated that word Christ it feels like something so beautiful to bring this female form to it and then even more beautiful to me is actually the inclusivity of making it male and female. You know, I just love that because it's like, yeah, you know, let's not create another matriarchy and say it's all got to be a matriarchy. Let's let's go forward together, you know, in, in, in unity, in balance where we're on, you know, equal terms, because like we've all been men and women in our past lives. You know, <laughs> it's not like I can say I own the divine feminine because I'm a woman, you know. Yeah, that was a great elaboration. I'm, I'm glad that you uh, shared that with us, Rachel. Um, tell us a little bit more about this book, Rachel's little book on healing. Well, I can remember when I when I wrote it and I published it because, like, I have to say, for years and years and years, I I was really feeling like I had to be out there teaching that I had to share all this stuff and like I said like now I have quite a big audience but for the first like 10 years I really 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 didn't and it was like no one was really interested in what I was doing I was going but no but, no. but when I wrote this book I sort of felt it, it, it condensed like many many years of doing healing sessions for other people working with Sarah and I felt like I managed to get like the essence into this book. And I do, it's a little bit dramatic, but I can remember sort of feeling like, oh, phew, now I've got that into the book. That's, I've done something good now. Like if I died or something, I'd be going, oh, well, at least I've got that in the book. You know, <laughs> it's like, I really felt like I had to get that, that essence in there. <laughs> yeah. You know, I wanted to touch upon something. So, um, you know, being a pioneer of um, Ascended Master Sarah and, and sharing her teachings and, and you know, providing healing uh, with your clients and whatnot. So it wasn't, it was so new and it wasn't so, you know, I often, once there's something new, a lot of times there's, you know, resistance to change. It's not often, you know, uh, received so well, but yet um, you had enough determination and, and fortitude and, and trust to stay with it. So I, I just wanted to highlight that because that, that's a really beautiful quality. Thank you. Thank you. And but she just wouldn't go away, really. <laughs> it's like whatever way I turned, Sarah was always there. And I just loved her energy. And you know, even when I was a kid, you know, it's like if I had something good, I wanted to share it with other people. And it was the same when I was a psychiatric nurse. Everything new that I learned, then I wanted to tell everybody about it. And so, I mean, I was very fortunate when I lived in the UK. I, I, I moved to a part of Surrey um, where I became part of quite a big spiritual network. And so I got to know a lot of people through this. This is where I did like my priestess training and they got to know me. So that gave me a pool of people who were willing to come and have healing sessions with Sarah or come and listen to me give a talk or come and do a workshop with me. So I was very fortunate that I had that grounded. If I didn't have that to start off with, I'm not sure how I, where I would have gone because it was before the days where the internet was really doing anything much. You couldn't just like go on a Facebook Live and, and suddenly have people listening to you, you know? Right, right, yeah, yeah, absolutely. What about um, Rachel, Sarah, you, um, you were saying that Sarah is uh, very much connected in with um, sacred earth and, and certain earth areas as, as uh, being you know, very holy, very sacred ground. Um, so what does she say about that? Um, what about, about the sacred earth work? Mm -hmm, yes. All right, so so I think it was last year or the year before it really started to come through about like the environment, basically, and about, you know, so like so 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 this book, you know, this is about this is about healing us. Mm -hmm. Now she's saying, okay, it's really great, you've all done this work. 
And so many of you do, have done so much work and you've come to an incredible place, you know, in, in, in your short life. Now it's time to work on the earth and we have to do the same for the earth. So the, the last couple of years has been, you know, I've been, so mainly I, I don't often do one-to-one -one sessions now. I'm mainly doing teaching. And like, if people look at my website, I have like a teaching, uh, uh, a healing system that I teach. I initiate other people into these energies. And um, next year I'm going to be teaching about, you know, how you work with these sacred earth energies. And so we've been doing a lot of working with the violet flame for the earth. And like, so someone can actually like, they find out, first of all, they find out like where their own tract of land is because as healers and witches and shamans and psychics and all of these things, we all, many of us have very, very deep roots into the land and much more than we realize. And we can actually co-create with Sarah and the angels and the elementals, these clearing temples of violet flame that start to very gently come in and start clearing whole areas of the landscape. And so this is kind of the next level now. It's like, OK, so we've got to this point in the human race. Now we need to really start like working big time out there. And I know a lot of people are, you know, doing earth healing work already and I don't think it's so much that we're healing the earth it's like we're clearing up what's needed to be cleared up from the last well quite a long time because there's a lot of like um soul you know lost souls you know there's a lot of like trapped souls on the earth plane that's one of the first jobs you have to do is like helping people there's so much to clear up you know it's like going on to a beach and picking up all the trash really not, not that those people are trash, but you know, you just have to, you have to clear and cleanse and get everything in its rightful place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was such a beautifully elaboration on, on looking at um, the, you know, clearing and, and healing of the earth. And, and I love that you, um, you know, offer these as um, initiations and, and teachings to help, to help others kind of tap into that and, and also, you know, provide that uh, for the earth and of course you know also for our healing as well so what what a great great service we still have a little bit of more time rachel what else would you like to share with us i have a channeling a channeling that i'd like to share and that is from it's from the sarah's little book of healing and um i'd like to read that out if i may absolutely Okay, so this is called the center of yourself channeling. Welcome all. I am the Ascended Master Sarah. Today I have come to speak to you of the physical shells of which you inhabit and their entryway into the world. Many of the world's most spiritual religions have been de dedicated to teaching how to cast off the body so as to liberate the spirit trapped inside to allow the soul to reside within nirvana or the higher spiritual dimensions. Today, I wish to speak to you of how the higher self can inhabit your physical body and become the way in which through you can be in contact with nirvana. In fact, with all of creation, all of the time, these are the mysteries I have come to teach. Your body is your physical tool here on this earth. It is how you will affect change here on the physical planes. The ascended masters, the angels and archangels, all can assist and help from the realms within which we exist. We can gently persuade and create optimum conditions from within which the best possible chances for change and transformation can occur. But it is you that has the power to create the new earth here in physical manifestation. And in so many more ways than you know. At this point where heaven meets earth in your bodies between the heart and the solar plexus, so am I. 
I have come to reawaken that which lies dormant within yourselves. Already my light, my love, dances secretly across the earth, skipping and laughing that the miracles of life, which are yourselves, are beginning the long thaw to your spiritual spring. And in my secret dance, I would whisper stories of hidden chakras lying nestling under the snow, simply wait, waiting for all to melt so it can reveal its magnific magnificence. Humanity, creation is your birthright and within you, you have the power to create, not just your own lives, but universes as well. At the point where heaven meets earth in your bodies, so I am. Here is the entry point to your souls, your higher selves, not far above you in some far away dimension, but here, right here at the centre of yourselves. Here is all things and no thing, manifest and unmanifest creation. From here, from this place, will new humanity start to live here at the centre of themselves, at the centre of all things. To assist you in your lives, you can call on me, my light, my love, by bringing your attention to me, to the balance point in between your heart centre and your solar plexus. Breathe into this space, feel your awareness, be here, Breathe into this space whenever mind has taken over and you need to reconnect with yourselves. Allow yourselves to practice being at the centre of yourselves and watch the magical mysteries of your lives unfold before you. And remember there at the centre of yourself, there you will find me. Blessings are upon you. All is well, Sarah. That was so beautiful. Wow, can really feel um, her energy. And so here again, she's giving us, you know, practical um, insight into how to connect with her and uh, bridging uh, heaven on earth. And again, you know, saying that it, it's all right here, right now, how to be more present. And um, you know, that, that our, our soul isn't somewhere in some distant place. It is here and we just, we need to connect in with it. Yeah, absolutely. And that is actually an esoteric teaching that we work with a lot. There is um, within certain Hindu teachings um, that were written in Sanskrit that in between the heart center and the solar plexus, the point where they meet is our divine spark. And that place is called the Hri Padma, which means the sacred lotus of the heart. And we actually work with that sort of in the healing systems and other, other courses that I do with Sarah. And at the moment, it has this shell around it. And that shell is created by all the things within us that are not in right relationship with the world. And as you slowly begin to dissolve it, by doing all this stuff, you know, using life as daily therapy and all the rest of it, the higher self or the divine spark is sort of revealed bit by bit by bit by bit. And then when it's fully open, that's us being our higher self on the earth. We just come into oneness. And that is kind of the whole point of everything, really. Yes. And so beautifully said. Thank you, Rachel. You could feel that like unfolding in that flower just you know petal by petal opening yeah so beautiful Rachel we have just a few more minutes we'd like to offer you the closing comments however you'd like to close the show and please let us know how we can stay connected with you how people you know can sign up and receive some of your teachings some of your initiations your healings Great, thank you. So I have a website, rachelgoodwin.dk, because I'm in Denmark. And you can find everything that I do on there because I am quite diverse. I do get bored quite easily. I have a podcast called Sacred You. You can find that on there. I teach a number of classes, which you can find 
past and present on the website because they're also all recorded and still accessible. I have a blog that I write. I am fairly active on Facebook. And again, you can find those groups. I have a page and two Sarah groups. Um, and yet I have the Sarah Healing classes. The next one is starting in September. If you're interested, that's already starting to fill up. And I only have six places on that. And um, yeah, I'm teaching the Sacred Earth work next year. So yeah, lots going on. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Lots of exciting things going on. Um, Rachel, um, how can we get a hold of your book? It's on Amazon. I published it through Amazon. So just, yeah, go on there, put in Sarah's Little Book of Healing or Rachel Goodwin and, and you'll find it. Okay, all right, very good. This has been an amazing journey that you've taken us on to find out about you and about Ascended Master Sarah. Um, so grateful um, for you being our guest today and, and sharing all this information with us. Thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you. You're, you're really welcome. And, and I think it's a lovely, lovely thing you're doing here. I saw the other guy that you were interviewing this week and he created this incredible mandala on a wall. It was absolutely beautiful. I was like, oh, wow. I felt, I felt very humble next to that mandala. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, his work is, is amazing. And um, I'm certainly grateful, you know, for the opportunity to connect with, you know, such amazing people like you and, and the other guests that, that come on Art and Talk. So, yeah, and, and thank you for, for those kind words and much success with, with all that you're, that you're working on and, and that you're sharing and the teachings and, and uh, getting, getting everything out about um, Ascended Master Sarah. All right, so many blessings, lots of love and light. Thank you so much, Rachel, again, for being our guest today. Thank you, you're welcome. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching Art and Talk today. Again, stay connected with us on social media, and we'll talk soon on the next Art and Talk. Until then, be well and be blessed.